Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. I am doing something a little bit different today because normally we're doing things such as accessories, we're doing reviews of uh, different things, particularly as of late the Cybertruck and all of the accessories uh, that you can get with it. Um, by the way, I do have some links below for some discounts on those accessories, not just for the Cybertruck but just Tesla vehicles in general. So. Uh, feel free to click on those links. It really helps us out. But today we're doing something slightly different because what I had originally planned was to do a segment on the unique feature of the Cybertruck to utilize PowerShare to power your home in the case of a power outage. That was my plan, actually, but it didn't exactly go as planned. In fact, we had a few hiccups along the way and it became quite the learning experience. So that's what we're going to talk about today because I think there's quite a bit here uh, that you need to know about and things that could be potentially problematic. So stay tuned and be back in a moment. Welcome back. There are some things that are unique to the Cybertruck, and one of those things is the power share system. And what this allows you to do, or what it's supposed to allow you to do, is allow you to power up to basically 11 and a half amps to your home uh, if your home loses power. The way that this is done is that you have a power share system installed into your home. There's a panel which they install, and then uh, that allows the truck to power the home. I mean, it could actually last quite a while. I mean, with a refrigerator, an air conditioner, and several lights, you're talking at least two days of continuous usage from the truck, possibly up to three days, depending on how much it's being used. Uh, it could power the home for that period of time. And so I had that system installed into my home, and it did take a full day for them to install it because they, quite frankly, they did have to move some circuits around and uh, do some other things in order to make it all work. I had to select which parts of the home I wanted to be powered in the case of a power outage. In any case, that's what the plan was. Now, here's what actually happened, right? We set to uh, set up the system. The system was set up properly, as far as I know, it was set up properly. And but you know, after they left, several days later, I realized that no one actually tested the system. No one actually tried to use the truck to power the home after they had installed all of this. So this is what I tried to do. And so we were going to film this sequence and show you. Uh, the benefits of the system and showing you how the system worked and you know, how it was installed and all of this. But that kind of went sideways when it came time to flip the switch. Yeah. Okay, it did change. It didn't work. Switch was flipped. Power did not flow to the home. Even though the truck said it was powering the home, or at least it was attempting to power the home, no current was initially leaving the vehicle going to the house. And this turned out to be quite the problem because now we had to figure out what the issue was. We didn't know whether the issue was with the power share system or was the issue with the truck, and we had to figure this out. So we tried several times, could not get it to work. Um, we had the guys come back out to check the system. Magically, the system actually was working because when they came back out, the truck started powering the house. I don't think it was powering it well enough. That's just me. Um, so something was amiss. Ironically enough, a few days later, I have my truck charging on the overnight charger didn't touch it at all right you can see where the amperage of the charge drops from 12 watts to 6 watts just all of a sudden while it's charging overnight 
Nothing had changed during that period at all. I didn't change any settings. In fact, I was in bed asleep when all of this actually happened. The truck just magically dropped down to six uh, watts. Lo and behold, come to find out, the truck was no longer charging at its normal 48 amps. It now started charging at, well, 24 amps on my home charger. I could not get it to charge at any faster rate than 24 amps. So what this meant was that now all of a sudden, all of my charging times were taking a lot longer than normal. I mean, double the amount of time. So what would have taken me a two or three hour charge, I'm looking at four or six hours just to charge the vehicle up. I, I, I could barely charge the vehicle up overnight in time for me to uh, go and run it around in the morning. So this became a problem. What I didn't realize was how big of a problem this was actually becoming. As I started researching this topic, I couldn't really find any information on it, and so here I am doing the video on it. I'm realizing that if I'm encountering this problem, I know there are other people encountering this problem too. So here we go. This all stems from what Tesla calls the PCS2. And what this is, it's, it stands for the Power Conversion System 2. Literally, that's really what it stands for. It's one board that sits deep down in the vehicle. It's underneath the bed of the truck, underneath the air compressor and all of that. And it's a board about, mm, about yay long and about yay wide. A big blue board, and it's called a PCS. Most uh, EVs have a PCS or some version thereof. Um, in the Cybertruck, it's really critical because of the type of uh, electrical systems that we have on board. And what it is, as, as the name implies, power conversion system, it does a couple of different things, but a couple of very important different things. Number one thing it does, it changes the AC to DC in the truck and vice versa, it's bi-directional. It changes DC to AC. This is what allows you to charge at home from an AC adapter to charge into a DC battery and also allows the Cybertruck as a DC power source to then backfeed the home with an AC current coming out the cord. That's one of the things this uh, board does. The second thing it does, it steps the AC and DC currents up and down. Uh, in terms of the AC current, it changes the, it, the uh, frequency of the signal, and in the DC, it changes the voltage in the system. If you have a Cybertruck, then you know you effectively have three different types of voltages in your DC system. You have a high voltage system, a mid voltage system, and a low voltage system. Oof. Well, turns out this PCS board is pretty complicated and it's pretty revolutionary too. I did a deep dive into this board and it turned out to be really interesting. And you know, I, I highly recommend everybody going out and taking a look at this. It's, it's, it's complicated stuff, but it's also quite interesting. So I'm gonna simplify it for you because I know um, for a lot of people, this is gonna go over a lot of people's heads and you say, well, okay, well, what in the world do I need to know this for? <sighs> if I only knew, boy, oh boy, oh boy. So the AC system, what had happened to the board, basically I lost one of the AC conversion systems, uh, cycle converters is what, is what they call it. I lost, this board has two of them. What Tesla has learned over time, especially with this vehicle, they have started building redundancy into uh, the electrical system. In this case, if we were to lose the AC cyclo converter, if we only had one of them, I would not be able to charge the vehicle. And I would not be able to discharge the vehicle at all. And all of the power ports, uh, the, the outlets, all of the USB ports, none of those would work if I lost that system. Turns out they had a secondary system. The problem was, I didn't know that the one system had failed and I did not know that I had a second system. There was never any message to tell me any of this. The only indication that I had 
was the fact that the truck was not charging at its proper rate on my home charger. If I had just been doing supercharging the whole time or uh, something like that, I never even would have noticed because supercharging is DC power. That's not AC power. There's a separate system for the DC uh, charging and that does DC to DC conversions. And we'll talk about a little bit more about that in a minute. But for the AC side, no, it, it gave me no alert whatsoever that I had lost my AC system until I went into the service menu and saw that there was a problem with the PCS. Once again, I had no idea what the PCS was up until this point. Took my truck in, finally. I sent the error messages into Tesla, and bottom line is they needed to, they just decided to replace the whole PCS board. Uh, even though it was one section of the board, uh, they just decided to replace the whole board. Took them a while to get the board in. Part took about a week to come in and took them about a day and a half to install it. As I said, they had to take out part of the bed of the truck, go underneath and get, dig down in there. And it's not a simple process for anybody to actually do this because of all the different lines you've got to pull out and the different uh, systems that you have to take care of. The system itself is actually really simple, but to get to the board is actually problematic and it's actually quite a bit of work uh, to get get in and out of the bed of the truck because of all the other lines that you have to disconnect. And so this took about a good day and a half to replace. After it was replaced, truck works fine. Truth be told, I have not tested it again. But in the process of doing my research, I tend to have learned a few things. Number one, the AC system won't give you an alert. And the only alert that you will get is that your truck is not charging normally. And if you're coming up on your warranty and your truck is not charging normally, I highly suggest that you take it in for service. But more importantly, I've seen several accounts online about people losing power to their vehicle. And I'm beginning to suspect this board is at the heart of that issue because on the DC side of things, the DC to DC conversion, it doesn't have just one converter on that board. It has two. And if you lose one, then you're going to get a message that you have lost redundancy. And it's a very important mes message, and I'll tell you why. If you lose that redundancy, that means if you were to lose the other DC converter, then the entire vehicle loses power, okay? It's very important that you understand this. The whole vehicle loses power. In an ordinary vehicle, this is a problem, but not one that could not be overcome by you pulling alongside the road, applying the brake, and just pulling off to the side of the road as the vehicle lost power. No, this is a cyber truck. Remember, we have steer-by-wires steering. This steering wheel needs electrical power in order to operate. So if you were to lose your DC to DC uh, conversion and the truck lost power, you would not only lose power to the vehicle rolling forward, you would lose your steering as well. So you can about imagine if you're doing 65 miles an hour down the highway and the whole vehicle just shuts off and the only thing you've got are brakes and the vehicle will hopefully keep traveling in a straight line. If it's going on a curve, well, you know, good luck. So you have no steering. And so it brings up this big old message basically telling you that you've lost redundancy. Do not force the vehicle to drive in this state. I do believe it will let you drive at a very slow speed just to get off of the highway wherever you're at and to pull to the side of the road. If you see this message, please heed it. If you lose the other one and you're driving down the highway, then you could possibly lose power to the entire vehicle, including your steering. And that will be fatal, more than likely. And I wouldn't want to see that happen to you. So it's really important to understand these uh, more sophisticated systems, I think. And so I wanted to just let you guys know what this system was about, what the PCS system uh, did. Uh, 
I highly do recommend taking a look at your service menu every once in a while. If I can uh, do another video on that, leave a comment below if you want me to do some videos on the service menu and show you around there a little bit. It's very helpful if you know what to look for. I don't uh, recommend going there changing any settings. Do not do that. Resist that temptation. But it's okay to look, okay? Um, but like I said, let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see me uh, do a video on that, and, and I'll take a look at it. But for right now, just know that uh, it will pop up in the service menu. The AC to AC uh, stuff will pop up in the service menu if you know to look for it. But as I said, the only indication I got was the charger not working. So there you go. Well, as I said, I've got the PowerShare fixed. Um, hopefully I'll get around to doing another video on that and showing you exactly how it works. Wish me luck. Um, I don't think I'll have a problem with it again, but you never know. We'll see. I'll let you know. In any case, hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment below. Let me know what you think and what you want to uh, see in these videos, and I'll be sure to get them out to you. And like I said, uh, we have 10% off on our affiliates so that you can get nice discounts on your uh, merchandise for the accessories for your vehicles. I will be doing more accessory videos. Uh, videos. Hope you like it, and I'll talk to you again soon. Peace.